Good morning, everybody. Welcome uh, to Bermuda. Uh, Steve, thanks for the good invite or in, uh, introduction. You know, he mentioned those 67,000 people. What he didn't mention is that they're all related to pirates, scallywags, and buccaneers. So uh, you have to be uh, somewhat careful with, uh, with Bermudians. Uh, I, I'm sure, and Samantha actually mentioned it this morning, she uh, got some great hospitality uh, from our Bermudian citizens, and they are world-renowned for hospitality. So I'm, I'm hoping you guys enjoy yourself and have a lot of fun while you're here. Please spend as much money as you possibly can, if you would. Um, we, we, need, we need all the money we can get. Um, I, in, in some respects, I think it's fantastic that the Marine Leadership Alliance is here. I mean, we, we have an extraordinary marine and nautical legacy in Bermuda. And I'm sure as you go around the island, you'll see that. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about that. But first, let's talk about innovation out of necessity, because we're going to uh, uh, try to uh, adhere to the uh, criteria around the, around the program, and uh, there's a lot to talk about when, it, when we're thinking about Bermuda and, and necessity. So let me get right into this, and we'll spend some time chatting about some background first, and then we'll look at some uh, strategy that we developed, and then some tactical things that we did, and then we'll, we'll move on to talk a little bit about America's Cup and a couple of other initiatives that are, that are on our uh, agenda, and hopefully you folks can apply this to your own businesses and, and innovation within your own business. Well, the Bermuda tourism economy has been in decline for 30 years. Uh, you may be surprised by that because it actually is an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary tourism destination, one of, the, one of the best in the world in many opinions. Uh, but in, in all reality, and we'll see some statistics in a minute, it, it has not been in good shape for many, many years. One of the reasons why it declined is because we've had this extraordinary growth in international business. Uh, reinsurance, insurance, finance have, have come here and really kept the country out of trouble for many, many years just because of the fact that they created so much economic energy. And while all that economic energy was taking place around finance, insurance, reinsurance, the tourism industry slowly but surely continued to decline over over time. Well, in 2008, um, Bermuda, like many other places around the world, um, we, we were no longer sheltered from the storm. And uh, the insurance companies, the reinsurance companies, the finance companies all took tremendous hits after 2008. And to this day, those hits continue. There's been a lot of consolidation, a lot of contraction of the businesses, of, of the insurance and reinsurance businesses. And so that's an impact at our economy. And for the first time in really Bermuda's history, unemployment and those kinds of economic challenges that other destinations are so used to have actually come upon our shores. So out of necessity, only out of necessity, there was a decision made that tourism needs to be part of the solution to revive the economy. We, unlike other, other countries, uh, we're, we don't make steel here. We're not uh, mining coal. We're not producing great IT that's used around the world. We're not producing agricultural products. The th one thing that we produce is a great experience. And so that's what our import is, a great tourism experience. And so we've dug in and gone to work on that and began, began to fix that. I wish I could tell you that the line up above was Bermuda tourism, but it's not. The line up above is global tourism in the last 30 years, and it's actually tripled. There's been a triple, tripling of tourists traveling international in the last 30 years. I mean, it's actually quite an extraordinary number, but you can see the line below. That's Bermuda tourism and what's happened to Bermuda tourism. So not only were we in decline, but we were in decline in a time when the rest of the global tourism economy was growing leaps and bounds. So the delta between the two is actually much worse than what you may think. Here's some other revealing statistics about tourism in Bermuda. Um, air arrivals down 46% in the last 30 years. Spending down 53%. Tax revenues are down, around, down 51%. Employment down 58%. Are you guys surprised you even came here, by the way? Uh, um, but the reality is we still have the, the same extraordinary destination 
that was one of the preeminent tourism destinations in the world. So it hasn't been an easy pill to swallow for the country, by the way. Uh, Bermudians are very proud people, and all of a sudden there's been this realization that uh, we have serious problems, and those problems are even shown in employment figures uh, within the, directly within the tourism economy, where you can see the, a real dramatic drop in, in tourism employment on the island in recent years. And behind these numbers, one of the real interesting things around these numbers is the fact that many of these jobs are entry-level jobs, where, which we desperately need within the economy, so that young, young people coming out of, uh, you know, out of school that aren't going off to university, uh, they, they desperately need the jobs. That's where the most problems reside, and that's where the most societal problems rare their ugly heads if in fact you don't have employment in that area. So this has been a, this has been a crisis. Also visitor arrivals, in some, in some respects it's been, uh, it's been masked even further than just depending on international business because our cruise visitors, which is the, is the, the, light, the dark blue line, have, has grown over time. But you can see our air arrivals has continued to decline over time and it manifests itself even more so than just in this trend line because the air visitor will spend $11 to every $1 that a cruise line visitor will spend. So again, the, the, the economic impact of this has been really dramatic on, on, the, on the nation. So this is calling for innovation out of necessity. In, in 2012, after uh, um, a lot of hand-wringing and a lot of, uh, a, a lot of angst and a lot of unemployment and a lot of economic decline, uh, a bipartisan effort, which is not easy to do, by the way, in this country, a bipartisan effort um, to strategically rebuild um, the economy was launched in what is known as the National Tourism Master Plan. That was authored in, in 2012. Uh, we have got, got some help when, when that plan was, uh, was uh, authored from TNL and Europraxis, which are two very uh, highly regarded consultants that helped us with this. There was a, a, a big research and analysis phase. I guess you always got to do that when you got consultants. That's what they get paid for, right? Um, and they, they looked at all of our tourism assets, our infrastructure. They looked at competition. They looked at the demand that we've had in recent years. Uh, they did a very deep uh, SWOT analysis on the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, um, looked at governance and realized that that was one of the big areas where we needed to, needed to improve. We had over 80 stakeholders that, that participated in this process. And in, at the end of the day, actually there was some real collaboration. And uh, that's, again, sometimes a rarity on this island. An action plan was formulated to address the challenges um, and... Um, and really dig in on where our strengths lie. So here are some of the some of the challenges that were revealed in this process. First of all, and you guys may be thinking about this in your own businesses because these may be challenges that you will have um, similar to what we may have in in Bermuda. Really, a lack of clear positioning and brand identity. We were all over the lot when it came to. What do people think about Bermuda? What, do they, what, do, what are their expectations about Bermuda? What, the new global competition. 20 years ago, uh, nobody would have gone to Dubrovnik. Dubai, Abu Dhabi were still just emerging out of the desert. And today, those are global destinations that are you know, beating our doors in. And uh, again, this, this also was the case in the Caribbean, where a whole bunch of new Caribbean destinations emerged. The super resorts that exist in, in the Caribbean 20 years ago didn't exist. And so at that point, Bermuda literally was the preeminent luxury tourism destination in the world before that. In the 60s, the 70s, all the way into probably the mid 80s, if you were a luxury traveler, Bermuda was absolutely unequivocally on your list of destinations. Also, seasonality has be became a real challenge for us because over time, as the industry started to decline, many restaurateurs, many hoteliers decided, well, you know what, we'll, we'll dial back our services, we'll 
shut down this part of the hotel, we'll shut down this part of the restaurant, we'll close down this, this part of the, uh, the attraction or this, this particular amenity, that makes no sense whatsoever. Um, and it actually is self-fulfilling prophecy. When you start saying to yourself, oh, by the way, we're not doing very well in this part of the season, so let's shut down operations, um, you can be guaranteed you're going to have problems. And we'll, we'll come back to that and talk a little bit more about that in a minute. In all honesty, our product and our experiences were not up to international standards. Uh, what people were coming here for uh, was, was changing, and it wasn't all about golf. It wasn't all about the beach. People wanted more authentic experiences. They wanted to do things differently than what they had done in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And we just didn't adapt to that. Plus, from an HR perspective, um, the, the hospitality industry uh, was not an appealing place for people to work anymore. Because of international business, you know, kids were coming out of school, going off to universities, coming back here and working in international business and making more money than they could in the hospitality industry. So we just lost any kinds of innovation, any kind of real expertise uh, within the hospitality industry. Uh, they were moving on to other businesses. Also, from, a, from our perspective, from an investment uh, arena, this is a very difficult place to do business because there's very high operating costs. Uh, there's very high barriers to entry by government purposely, which didn't help us one bit. By the way, much of this has changed, I'm glad to tell you, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But uh, every, anything that's coming to Bermuda is either flying in an airplane or it's on a container. It's in a container. And the costs associated with you know, my wife reminds me of this all the time, you know, going to Costco uh, and buying broccoli for 99 cents a pound and you're paying $4.99 a pound here, uh, it, it's, a, it's a revelation. And the hotels, the restaurants, the whole hospitality industry has to deal with that, that price structure. So it becomes very difficult, first of all, to invest and even more difficult to innovate when you have those kinds of costs. There was also serious problems within government. There was a, just a, a lot of dysfunction, a lot of lack of professionalism uh, as to how Bermuda uh, marketed itself to the world, and that had to get fixed, or no matter how good your product would be, that just that wasn't going to turn around with that kind of dysfunction that existed. And there was a lot of wasting of money. Um, they just were not spending money in an efficient way. But there's still some strengths that existed through all those issues. Uh, we had this historic legacy of a world-renowned destination, really one of the preeminent high-end luxury destinations in the world. We, you saw on that chart we had a strong and growing cruise market, and those guys could come back and be repeat visitors at some point if, if we wanted them to. We still have a geographic location that we believe is a, a, a huge competitive advantage. Uh, it takes uh, nine hours to fly from, from London to Antigua. It takes six hours to fly here. Uh, it's, some of you guys may, if you were coming from New York or coming from Boston, it's an hour and a half, wheels up to wheels down, uh, two hours from Atlanta. And so we believe that's a real strategic uh, advantage for us. We believe that we also have some unique cultural and natural resources, and uh, you can't replicate this stuff easily anywhere else around the world. Even if anybody had a chance to go up to St. George's, uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is a historical village uh, on the other end of the island, uh, Disney couldn't recreate that. It cost billions and billions of dollars for Disney to recreate that. And that's actually the real thing. It's still sitting there and still in, in really, good, really good shape. And the reality is people that came here love it. They did like it, so we had a very high repetition of visitors. Almost 60% of all the folks that, that come here have been here before. That's also a bad thing, by the way, because the demographics start moving away from you as people get older and uh, you'll end up losing those folks. So, um, the, and the last but not least, this, and I don't want to mention any particular Caribbean islands, but this is not a Caribbean island. This is a first tier, uh, world class nation. It's one of the wealthiest nations in the world, even for all our economic challenges. Even to this day, we're the third or fourth wealthiest nation in the world. 
and it looks it when you drive around. There's very little poverty. There's not a lot of crime. It's an incredibly clean country, and I think we, we always felt that that was a huge competitive advantage in comparison to some other destinations. So coming out of this strategic uh, initiative around a national tourism plan, there was um, a, des a desire to build a new organization, a desire to get this effort out of government where, in all honesty, it did not belong. And so what was cast was a strategy uh, for a new organization to own, to own the National Tourism Plan, but also to execute on a tactical uh, initiative, and that was the Bermuda Tourism Authority, which was launched in 2013, uh, the end of 2013 it, um, was when the legislation was initiated. And um, I came here in January of last year uh, to start it. And then we officially got underway April 1. I was the first employee. Uh, today we have uh, uh, 38 employees with uh, offices in New York, office in London, representation in Milan and in Frankfurt and in Toronto, and, and 39 employees with about a $26 million budget. And um, we literally started this company from scratch with very little help from government, by the way, because the civil servants were really unhappy that this came out of government. And uh, it was not an easy thing to get, <laughs> get started. But we have been very happy that there is very little government interference so that the next minister, the next premier, uh, the next whim of a politician um, to go fix something on a short-term basis uh, is no longer in play. And so we've, we're building what we consider to be a world-class organization that is managed by uh, tourism professionals, people that actually understand the business and know the business. Um, that I, when I was recruited, I, I came with a, although you know, people would suggest to you that um, I, I'm the only person on the island that isn't an expert in tourism, if you re read the newspapers sometimes. But, um, but we really do have a team that, that is a highly competent group of folks that are, really understand the business. And uh, I, I guess I'm feeling really good about that kind of stuff. And we're building a, we're building a world-class marketing organization. That's what destination marketing organizations do first and foremost, is build marketing capacity, marketing horsepower. Also, we've, we had issues with our product. The product really has not been up to standard with what it needs to be in order to comp compete at the very elite level of world-class destinations. And wh when I refer to the product, I, I'm referencing attractions, uh, things like uh, cuisine, uh, the, our ability to move people on ferries and buses. And there, there needed to be a spiffing up of all those parts of the product in order for us to, to, to improve our position. And, and actually, that work is, is underway. Um, also, anybody that tries to invest in Bermuda has huge issues. So we've, we've made a big move and have a, a department within the, the national, within the tourism authority that's working specifically on investments and trying to uh, make red tape become red carpet when people are here. Uh, and you'll see we've had some success with that in recent days. In a couple minutes, we'll show you a slide of some of the investments that are, that are taking place. And most importantly, from all of this, we want to grow air arrivals. That's the top priority. We love people coming on cruise ships, but um, that, that is not the place where we believe the economy will be most affected. So we're always trying to. So if you could get, Samantha, as many Honda aircraft flying here as possible, we'd, we'd appreciate it. I want to show you, um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a big uh, fan of uh, Stephen Covey. I guess maybe you know I need as much help as I get personally all the time. So, um, but you know his seven habits of highly effective people. We have seven habits for the for the Bermuda uh, Tourism Authority, and so I want to talk about these. And, and I again I think I hope some of these will uh, relate back to the businesses that you folks are in, and you can think about these every single day. So one, um, move from a seasonal to a year-round destination. We can't afford to talk about the off-season anymore. I, I, I grew up in Syracuse, New York. I lived in Buffalo. I lived in Milwaukee. Syracuse doesn't have an off-season. Buffalo doesn't have an off-season. Milwaukee doesn't have an off-season. And I assure you, I assure you the weather is much better here 
than it is in Syracuse, Buffalo, and Milwaukee. And um, uh, Bermudian families, they don't, their, their, their expenses don't take a vacation in the off season. I mean, there's still, there's still expenses to be incurred. So we need to keep people working on a year-round basis. So we're allocating a lot of time and effort uh, to improve our marketing resources uh, that are focused on seasonality and focused on the shoulder seasons. It's not always about the beach, but it's rather about great sports, or recreation, art, culture, and culinary delights. There's a whole bunch of things you can do when it's 60 degrees out that uh, you can't do in Buffalo when you're shoveling four feet of snow out of your driveway. The uh, number two, geographically identify Bermuda as an Atlantic instead of a Caribbean destination. Um, we have different seasons in the Caribbean, usually less severe weather, shorter flight times, from all the feeder markets, and even different consumer experiences. So it's, this is all about geography. This is not about culture or our connections to the Caribbean. We love our connections to the Caribbean. This is about geography and the fact that we need to take advantage of, of geography. Three, don't boil the ocean. We're a quality destination for discriminating consumers. And this price structure on the island of the hospitality industry is really for the upper tiers of the personas. And I would suggest this is a good lesson for you guys in the marine industry also, that um, if you're looking to be all things for all people, it probably isn't going to work. It just, it doesn't work. And this is one of the big problems that Bermuda had for many, many years. And some of this was driven by politics. We want to be all things to all people. We want to have people come here from all over the world. And it didn't work. Uh, for us to be advertising uh, in Parade Magazine in Rapid City, Iowa, which we've done, by the way, in the past, made no sense whatsoever. You really have to dig in on the top ends of the mosaics or the personas or the demographics, whatever terminology you may use. And I would suggest to you guys, that's where you need to be also. And if you're thinking about you know, being all things to all people, you may be making a, making a mistake. We certainly did when we tried to be all things to, to all people. The fourth one, embrace 21st century marketing. We're investing in building brand over the long haul. For many, many years, Bermuda made a huge mistake of constantly doing one-offs to go fix the short term. And so they didn't invest in brand. They didn't invest in continuity of brand. They just invested in one-offs. They did boxing matches. They brought Beyonce here. They brought Mary J. Blige here. I mean, millions and millions of dollars. And that's not in our sweet spot. That's not part of the legacy that is Bermuda. And I would suggest to you that you ought to think about the same thing. If you're thinking about doing promotions that are just a one-off, just one time, or just a knockoff, or let's just go fix this little problem in this particular time in our marketing cycle, I, I would suggest to you that you're probably making a mistake. You need to be thinking about the long term. And by the way, <clears throat> it's painful because um, we've had to rebuild uh, our website, we have a new advertising agency, we have a new social media company, we have a new PR firm. All of this has happened in the last, in the last year. And by the way, every time you do that, you're, you're, um, you're investing in the long term, but you're also probably dinging yourself in the short term. Because you may be able to do something that could have created more room nights or sold more boats or sold more hardware or sold more sale in the short term. But I would suggest to you that that's probably not the best thing to do, is just stay at it and buckle down. And I mean, I've gotten a lot of criticism here because, like I say, everybody's an expert in tourism but me. Um, I've gotten a lot of criticism because we're, we are investing for the long haul, but I'm convinced, I'm convinced that that's the case. I, I want to tell one quick story around that, that unrelated to Bermuda. In, in, in 2001, um, for better or for worse, I was the CEO of Destination DC, the Convention and Tourism Corporation Convention Center in Washington, DC. And um, we had an economic wipeout after 9-11, literally a complete unequivocal economic wipeout. And this, um, and right away, New York got right back at it. Both, both New York and Washington, DC had economic wipeouts. But New York got right back at it, come back to New York, the, if you remember, they did a, a big promotion around Broadway and please come back to New York. And everybody wanted us to do the same thing, but 
Washington, D.C. was in a completely different place after 9-11. Every single night, Rumsfeld, Ashcroft, Mueller, and these guys would get up there and say, you know, Washington, D.C. is the number one tourism target in the world. It was not helping us one bit. Everybody was saying, come back to New York, but everybody was saying at the same time, Washington, D.C. was the number one tourism target in the world. And if you visited Washington at that time, we had uh, armored personnel carriers sitting on streets. We had Patriot missiles on the National Mall. Patriot missiles on the National Mall. If, if, and you forget, we had a Reagan National Airport shut down for one month, for one month. I mean, just think about shutting down Atlanta for a month shutting down Los Angeles or Chicago for a month. So it was a disaster beyond comprehension. And we made a decision, although we had the money, we raised about six or seven million dollars for advertising from various sources and, and, and our public sector resources. We made a decision not to advertise. Well, people wanted my head on a platter. And, but what we did is we just stayed the course, we listened to the market, we kept listening to consumers. And if you remember, there was a term going around at that time called cocooning. And everybody in America was cocooning. Nobody was traveling. So we sat there for four months and didn't do one thing, listening to the market until finally research told us that people were starting to come out of their cocoons. And then when we finally did advertise, we ended up being heroes. I almost didn't make it that far because there were a whole bunch of people that wanted to fire me. So I would suggest to you again that um, you want to make sure that you, you, you really do go for the, the, long, the long pull. Um, embrace our British heritage and island soul. So <clears throat> some of the politics around Bermuda uh, at the time, uh, were, we were in denial that, in fact, we uh, have a, a very strong connection and link to, to the UK and to British heritage. And I don't care about politics. I care about people showing up on airplanes and coming here and spending money. And so we are, again, embracing our British heritage. We have an extraordinary array of British antiquities here, British customs, from tea time to cricket. And I would suggest to you that it's great for the, the destination to re-embrace our, our British heritage. And forget about the politics. I don't, I don't care about the politics of embracing our, our heritage. We like to call it uh, a combination, actually, of British charm and island soul. And it's entitled Proper Fun. And you'll see some of the some of the stuff we're doing around proper fun momentarily. Six, celebrate the real Bermuda and its people. And, it, and this is what the global tourists want. They don't want fabrication. They don't want um, something that is um, a, a false sense of, of a destination. They want authenticity. They want experiences. They want to dig in and feel and touch. Uh, Samantha mentioned yesterday that she, she uh, taxi cab, uh, she was waiting for a bus, and um, a Bermuda, it was raining, and a Bermudian pulled up alongside and said, come on, get in, I'll take you wherever you want to go. I mean, this is, this is what visitors want. They want to touch and feel and see and taste what a destination is about. Whether it's Bermuda, Los Angeles, or uh, Abu Dhabi, or Dubrovnik, that's exactly what they want. They don't want these sterile uh, experiences that, that are curated that are curated. You don't need to be curated. You guys are smart enough, you know, with the internet and all the availability to, to the, to the uh, incredible amount of data out there, whether it's Trip, TripAdvisor or anybody else, you don't need curated events anymore. You don't need curated destinations. You guys can curate it on your own. So number seven, embrace and promote sports and recreational experiences. And I would suggest to you that this is right in everybody's sweet spot sitting in this room. The global visitors desire sports and recreational experiences. Um, we, we have a new golf direction. We've, we've initiated a whole new uh, initiative around golf. Um, we, we're working really hard on that, but we're also working on things like rugby and sailing and cycling and football, um, field hockey, triathlons, fishing, scuba diving. These are the places where athletes and recreational athletes and just plain old folk want to spend their quality time. So we're, we're making some progress on that, and I would suggest to you that um, you guys are uh, in the right place to, uh, in fact, uh, um, really 
find some real value from this, this trend that relates back to people wanting to have these kinds of experiences. So this is another slide that, this is, this is actually a snapshot of advertising that we've done recently on a, on a recent campaign. And what this shows you is that there, there used to be just, um, and again, this is, um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to blame uh, past administrations, but many advertisers, uh, and this was the case in Bermuda for a long, long time, um, we, we looked at one or two slices of, of the consumer experience. Um, and this, this really is a product marketing life cycle today. And it goes from people that are dreaming, first of all, about their vacation, or they're dreaming about their boat, or dreaming about their next powerboat or sailboat, then they research about that powerboat or sailboat. Then they finally decide to buy that sailboat. But then they're experiencing it. And, what's, and, and one of the newest parts of this marketing life cycle is that now people are sharing their experiences with family, with friends, whether it's on Facebook, Pinterest, or whatever. Uh, you can go on and on all day long. And what what many destinations have done for so long is just thought about one or two slices of this life cycle. If you're just thinking about when people advertising and touching consumers when they're in the research stage, you're making a mistake. You need to be touching them throughout the whole cycle of, of the consumer experience. And it requires all kinds of different media in order to do that. On one end, you may be touching them with Rob report, but on another end, you may be touching them with TripAdvisor. Uh, you may be talking to them on, on Sky Delta, which is the in-flight magazine, but at the same time, you may be uh, trying to connect with them in some way on YouTube. So you need to be thinking about the, the life cycle of a consumer and how they, in fact, make a purchase, but then also experience that purchase. Something we're spending a lot of time thinking about these days and using all kinds of... We used to use one media. We would buy double page spreads in Condé Nast magazine and hope they got things worked okay. Th th those days are long gone. Those days are long gone. Here is some of our creative concept, and I won't spend much time on this, but um, you can see that most of these are digitally based. I mean, if, we're, if, you're, not, if you're not on the internet, you're, you're making a gigantic mistake. About 85% of everything we do, every penny we spend is now on the internet. Um, and again, most of these are all digital, digital related uh, assets that are being used across a wide spectrum of, of, uh, of channels. And the other part of this is that we're trying to get people's own personal experiences to, uh, to, to connect to consumers. And we'll, we'll take a look at that in a second. I'm going to be very brief on this, but some of the current initiatives that are underway, things are getting better. I didn't want to leave you with a terrible taste about Bermuda, but things are getting better. There's a lot of development underway right now. Um, because we have a government that's more amenable to it, we have a, a BTA that's able to, to reach out to investors and, again, make it from red tape to, to red carpet. And you can see some of, this, uh, uh, some of this development that's taking place on the island. This is hotel related, but it also relates back to other attractions and restaurants. We're also making a big effort on airlift. It's really important to us to be connected, well connected. We're, we're getting ready to build a new airport. I'm sure you guys, as you came through the airport, you would suggest that might help us. Um, and it is, it is ready to, um, that project is ready to get underway. We're working very closely with the airport authority to, to get that done. But in the interim, we're also working closely with them to try to improve our airlift because you just can't do it without airlift. You have to have, you have, to have good airlift. America's Cup has been a, 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 literally a David and Goliath initiative for us. We started out, there were 12 destinations, every single one of them much bigger than we were, and um, we just stuck at it. Day in and day out for over a year, we had a team that worked on this, and we just never gave up. And no matter how many times people told us that there was no way in hell that Bermuda was going to host America's Cup, we just kept at it, and one by one, we picked everybody off, and eventually uh, we were successful, and we believe it will be a spectacular event for us. And we'll take a look at a, a, a video about that in just a second. 
So I'm going to show you two, these are about a minute and a half clips each here, and we'll, we can end on this, and then Terrence will come up and we can take some questions if you'd like. But first of all, this first one, um, love my Bermuda. This is the way that most people want to connect to their products with their own personal experiences. So we'll show you this, and again, this is a, how individuals are trying to connect to tourism products, and I would suggest to you that uh, there may be some lessons learned in the marine world from this, and then we'll take a look at the, Amer the uh, America's Cup video. So let's run this first one, John, if we could, please. So that had nothing to do with beaches, it had nothing to do with golf courses, it has to do with the people. And that's what the global visitor is looking for, is the connections to those kinds of folks. And um, we're pretty proud of that piece and we're doing a whole bunch of those these days. Uh, the next one is, um, this, this video was prepared when we made the announcement for America's Cup and it's about a two minute clip that I think you guys will enjoy and uh, I'm, I'm gonna do this. While you, uh, while you watch it. <laughs> John, do you want to show that? You can.
That's it. Terrence. <laughs>